All right, so the lab that we're working on this week is what is the weak acid? Um, main goal of this is we're going to determine the identity of an unknown weak acid, and we're going to use its pKa uh, to figure out what it is. Um, so um, a little difference between weak acid and strong acid. A strong acid is going to be completely dissociated in water, so if I have this situation going on, I don't have an equilibrium system. I have all of this reacting and going to this um, and forming the hydronium ion over here. However, when you have a weak acid, it's not going to be completely dissociated, only partially, so you have this equilibrium system between your acid and its conjugate base. Um, and now the extent to which this acid is going to dissociate and form its conjugate base is determined by its uh, equilibrium constant, or what we're going to call it is Ka, so we have that KEQ that we've used in the past for equilibrium, but when we're talking about acids, we just call that Ka, and it's the same thing as the equilibrium constant. You take the conjugate base and the hydronium ion concentration over H A and that is equal to your K A. Now, just like P H is the negative log of the H plus um, concentration, your P K A is equal to the negative log of that K A. And so this is something that you can find in a chart. It is a um, specific value for each um, each acid, right? So carbonic acid. Its pKa is 6.37. That is um, that is the pKa that carbonic acid has. And if you look at ammonium ion right here, its pKa is 9.25. So if you know the pKa and you don't know what the acid is, you can go to a chart like this, find your pKa, and know exactly what acid you're working with. Right, so it's not like hypochloric acid sometimes is going to have a different pKa. No, it's a, it is a set constant about the acid, describing what the acid does. Um, and so this is the way that we're going to determine what our unknown pKa, or our, our unknown acid actually is, is by determining this Ka. So uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we can calculate it uh, from its titration curve, right? So as we have this acid, it's chilling in a beaker, and if we titrate it with sodium hydroxide, right? We slowly add sodium hydroxide. Our pH is slowly going to rise because we'll start with a low pH because that's acidic. Uh, it's going to slowly rise until all of the acid is neutralized, boom, at the equivalence point like we've seen before. As you add more NaOH, you're going to have this increase in pH and it's going to slowly level out like this and you have excess base around. Um, so like we talked about before, at the equivalence point, we have a one-to-one -one mole ratio of our acid to a base, and we know that um, that the moles of NaOH added is equal to the moles of the acid that was there. All right, so we can calculate the concentration if we don't know the concentration of this unknown weak acid. All right? But here's the part where we can actually solve for the pKa of this, and it has to do with this Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and this is the Henderson-Hasselbalch right here. You have this situation with a weak acid, your pH is equal to the pKa plus log of this A minus over HA. And so if we look at this at the equivalence point, all of the HA is gone, right? And it's all form found in this A minus form, right? But if we look at halfway through, so half of the moles of NaOH added, that means we've only eaten up half of this acid, right? So if we like start with 10 of these, right, and we've eaten up half of it and we go to 5, right, so now we have 5 HA. Over here, how many A minus did we form? Well, we started with 0, right, and as it goes, we form 5, right, because we lose 5, gain 5. So we have 5 of these, we have 5 of these. So A minus over HA is, you know, 5 over 5, which is equal to 1. Well, the log of 1 is 0, as you can see right here, so my pH is equal to my pKa. And this is written in red over here. At the equivalence point, all the HA has been neutralized. So at the half equivalence point, half has been neutralized, and A, your conjugate base, equals your acid that's there. A over HA is equal to 1, log of 1 is 0, so your pH equals the pKa. So um, if you're going to do 
um, a titration, you get a curve like this, you find your equivalence point, all you gotta do is look back, go to halfway from the equivalence point, so we'll go from 50 to 25. What was my pH at this point? Oh, it's 4.5, maybe 5, right? My pH was my pKa, so my pKa is 4.5 or 5-ish. Right? So, um, what are we going to do? We are going to put our weak acid in here, and we're gonna have a stir bar in there. We're going to put a pH electrode into this beaker. We're going to have our burette right there. This is gonna be filled with the NaOH, just like we've done before. We're going to titrate the weak acid with the NaOH, the pH meter. We gotta have it placed inside the beaker so we can make a curve that looks like this. So we're gonna keep track of the pH as the titration is performed. Every one milliliter of NaOH that you add, you're gonna read and record the pH that comes off of this electrode. Right? And you're going to want to make a table and have all that in there. We're going to plot those points. We're going to plot the pH versus the NOH that we added. Um, and we're going to determine the equivalence point. At that equivalence point, we can get the concentration of our weak acid. Um, and that is something that we will not know as well. So we're going to have to calculate that. Once we get that equivalence point, when we're looking at our graph, we can figure out where the half equivalence point is. Right? And then once we have that half equivalence point, we can look at our table and we can figure out exactly what the pH is at that half equivalence point. Once we know the pH at the half equivalence point, we know the pKa. And then, oh, sorry, if we know the pKa, we can easily get the Ka because we do 10 to the minus pKa because remember, it's the negative logarithm of the Ka. <coughs> once we know this, we can easily go to a table and figure out um, which unknown acid we're working with. So that's all we're doing really in this lab is we're taking an unknown acid we're titrating it with NaOH we're gonna make a curve like this we're gonna solve our equivalence point boom get our concentration of our unknown acid and then we're gonna get the halfway get our pKa go to a table and we're gonna figure out exactly what unknown acid we're working with um, another way that you can calculate the pKa, and we'll do this as well. We're gonna compare both methods and see which is the most effective way of doing it. Um, so let's just say that I determine that my um, initial concentration of unknown weak acid is 0.651 molar. I just typed this random thing in there. This is called an ice chart. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this yet or if you have done this yet. But basically, this is initial, the initial state of your system before this reaction happens, the change that each of these things go through, and then your equilibrium situation. Where is it actually at after we've mixed it, right? So this is saying we're going to calculate the Ka before we even titrate. We're going to figure out what the Ka is without having to do anything to it. All we need to know is the pH of this system when we dissolve our weak acid into water, right? So if my initial concentration of weak acid is 0.651, we don't care about our concentration of the water. And before anything happens, we have no A- and we have no hydronium ions, right? So, but this is going to dissociate to some extent. We don't really know what the extent is. So what's its change? Well, we're going to lose a certain amount, and we'll call it X. Right? Again, we don't care about water. How much are we going to gain of A? Well, it's going to be the exact same amount. However many moles of this we lose is the exact same moles of this that we gain because of our one-to-one -one mole ratio, right? So we'll just call this plus X is our change. Then we have a hydronium ion, the exact same thing's going on. The amount of this that forms is exactly equal to the amount of this that we lose, so we'll call this plus X. So what is our equilibrium situation? Well, we have 0.651 molar minus X, we have x formed because we started with zero plus x is equal to x. Same deal right here. So what we can do is we can take this information, put this into our uh, expression for our uh, Ka, our equilibrium expression. So we know the concentration of the H3O ion by measuring the pH of the weak acid. Right. So we just put this acid into a beaker and we measure its pH. Right. Um, that's all you have to do. Once we know its pH, we know the hydronium ion concentration because the hydronium ion concentration is equal to 10 to the minus pH. Let's say H3O equals this right here, right? We'll just say that it's 2.3 times 10 to the minus 7, right? I don't really know why I wrote it out like that, but anyway, same deal. Well, that's equal to X because that's how much hydronium ions form when this dissociates. Right. So then we'll take our Ka expression and we'll just put in all these numbers that we 
No, right, because these are all the same. We have x times x because our, our Ka is A minus times H3O over our HA concentration. So we have x times x over 0.651 minus x. And then we're just going to put this in for x because we know that because we measured it from our pH. So then we'll do, you know, point. 2.3 times 10 to the minus 7 times 2.3 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 0.651 minus 2.3 times 10 to the minus 7. And that's going to give us our Ka right there. It's going to be 8 times 10 to the minus 14. It's a very, very, very weak acid. I just made up these numbers, right? doesn't mean anything. But in that way, we can solve for our Ka without ever even going through uh, any titration or anything. Um, but to find the Ka this way, you need to know the pH of the solution and you need to know your concentration of the weak acid. So what does that mean? We have to do the titration first because we don't know the concentration of the weak acid. Uh, we're going into this lab like assuming I basically found this bottle of acid laying around. I don't know what the concentration is and I have no idea what the acid is. And I need to figure all that out so I can figure out what to do with it. You know, So assume that. So you have to do a titration before you do this way. Um, so we're going to do both methods, this method and this method of figuring out the Ka, and we'll kind of figure out which one is more effective. Right? Uh, so this week, going into it, what we'll be given is we have an NaOH solution, which we're going to use for titrating, and we have an unknown weak acid. Both the identity and the concentration are unknown. We have no idea what they are. So what we are going to do, we're going to record the initial pH of the weak acid in the beaker, and we're going to titrate it with NaOH. Uh, every one milliliter of NaOH is added, we're going to record the pH in a table and we're going to make that titration curve and find the equivalence point. Once we find the equivalence point, we're going to solve for our weak acid concentration because we need that to do the second method that we had right here of concentrating or calculating our Ka. Um, and then we're going to use both methods <coughs> that we talked about to determine the Ka of our unknown weak acid. So we're going to use the concentration at the initial pH to do it this way, and then we're also going to use uh, the titration curve and the half equivalence point that we have right over here to find our Ka as well. We're going to figure out which is the most effective method of finding our Ka. Um, so we're going to solve for our Ka, and then we're going to use a table of known Ka values and determine what our identity of our weak acid is. Um, this is just a one-week lab. It is a lab report that you have to write up. Um, more information coming on that, but hopefully this gives you a good idea of what exactly is going on and what we're going to be making. This is the bulk of what the lab is going to be spent doing is titrating and getting this curve so we can calculate stuff. Because we're making this curve, we're not even going to use indicator. We don't need to put anything in because we, once we get all this data, we'll have a nice curve, and this should be even more uh, precise than that indicator is because it's always more precise to get something that we can do mathematically from a graph than it is to just go by color or by sight. Those aren't really super effective methods in reality of getting super, super, super close. Right? Um, so yeah, hopefully that helps.